Yo, you back at it. You good now? Yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened either. Well, welcome me? to the platform. Honor. So, uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, man, you lagging again. Yeah, I'm switching rooms. Maybe it's the room. You hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. So, uh, is Anna your real, not your real name, or is that just your stage name? Um, that's just a stage name. My real name is Brianna. Okay. So, where you got, where you got your stage name from? Um, I don't know. I was just trying to think of names, and um, I just thought about, I basically just dropped the Brie off of, that, off of my name and added an H at the end. I wanted something that was still going to be familiar, like with my real name. So, mm, interesting, interesting. So, tell everybody where you born and raised. It. Um, I was born in Germany, and I'm a military brat, so I've been pretty much everywhere. But I've lived in South Carolina for the most part. It must have been my Wi-Fi because it's it's better now that I moved around. Yeah, it ain't mine. Though. It ain't never mine. So, yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's five G over. Here. So you've been a military brat, so you grew up moving around a lot? Mm-hmm, yeah. So South Carolina is pretty much where you've been at most of your life? Yeah, I lived in New York for five years, um, Alaska, Kansas, and Germany and here. Okay, okay. So how long have you been taking, like, your music career series? I'd say, like, two, about two and a half, three years almost. Okay, okay. What made you start taking the series? They picked it up. Um, just, like, I really write, I write all of my music, um, I think I just started taking it more serious when, um, these crazy jingles would just, like, come in my head, like, hooks and stuff, and I was like, okay, I think I'm on to something, like, I should stick with this, so, yeah, that's, um, how that came about. I've always been interested in, like, anything with the arts, like, whether it was painting or, like, drawing, or anything like that. Writing, I always liked writing essays in school, so. It yeah, wasn't so, you good, so you was good in English growing up. Yeah, that's the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to. I was alright in English though. Geography, like social studies, my shit. Goddamn. I hated that. So that was my shit though. I'm, I'm kind of like that now. I'm like you know read books and stuff on that. But uh, anyway, so you grew up in military. Grad. What was that like having military parents? Like were they strict on you growing up or? Um, my mom's in the military. My dad isn't. My mom was kind of uh, sturdy. She's a Capricorn, too, so you know how they are. they real, like, business mind. What is, what, is, what is the month of a Capricorn? January. Okay, okay. End of December. My father's a Capricorn. Okay. Yeah, they're really, like, career-driven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always got, always work, no play type. Yeah, my mom's still in the military. She's a sergeant major. She's been in oh, for 27 God. years. Jesus Christ. My goodness. My goodness. That's the highest enlisted, I think, almost. Yeah, she works at the Pentagon. Oh, wow. She over uh, protecting Trump. I mean, not Trump. Biden over there. Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah. I swear it still feel like that man the president. I don't know why. <laughs> I know, because ain't shit changed. <laughs> exactly. All that bullshit talking about shit going to change. But uh, Joe Biden, the only person I know that said if you vote for him, you ain't black. I still can't get over that shit. He said that? Yeah, go look that up after this shit. He said, if you don't vote for me, he did that on the Breakfast Club. Char I think it was just him and Charlamagne having a conversation. And uh, He said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> right. Yeah, but uh, okay, so you've been doing that. Uh, military bread. And you grew up in Columbia, South Carolina? I mean, I've, I've been here for a good amount of time, but I wouldn't really, I mean, get, I guess, yeah, cause I guess I've grown up here. I don't really, it's hard for me to claim anywhere just because, like, I've been all over the place. If you've been here since you've been 12 and so on, you grew up here. Yeah, I guess. Gotcha. <laughs> so, uh, facts, 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 facts. And uh, I was watching one of your interviews. They were saying that you, a lot of people say you look like Taraji P. Henson. Like, oh, my know. God. <laughs> I can't go nowhere without somebody saying that. Yeah, I was watching one of your interviews, though. You had posted it up. You know. So, does that flattering? Or, I don't see the resemblance. I, I don't see it. Maybe because I ain't got my glasses on. I get but, it a lot. 
um my mama really looks like her my mama gets it um a lot i used to get sanaya lathan when i was younger because i used to do sports and um i don't know i just monica you know, <laughs> Monica? No, I never heard that before. No, Monica, because tonight Lathan played Monica in Love and Basketball. Love and basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that is a compliment because, like, I, I, I wanna, I act too, so I wanna play her in a biopic one day. So I definitely take that as a compliment. I think she's what, beautiful. What kind of sports you play? Basketball. I ran track. I played a lot of sports, but track was what I was really good at. You look kind of athletic though. You look um, strong though. You wrestled. No, I I ran track. I did the hundred and the two hundred, so I was a sprinter. Okay, okay. So you're a track star. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Right. You still a track star? Like still a runner? No, I just started back um working out because the way I was training, it was like I was really like training for track. I wasn't just like play play running track in high school. I ran track all the way from like seven to in college. So um, I kind of got tired of. Of, of working out and stuff so I took a couple of breaks and I just got back to working out but I don't really frequently run at all anymore did you get quarantine thick over the quarantine over the shutdown yes I did <laughs> yes I did definitely how much weight you think you gained though you put on a few pounds or... I think I gained like 25 pounds probably yeah I think you must be just eating but I was kind of small before I was kind of like bony looking before Damn, you just eating and fucking in. I was trying to gain weight though. I was gonna get a, a BBL, and then oh. yeah, like I had a schedule. I had a I had my surgery booked and everything. Um, and I paid a deposit and then I canceled it. How much the deposit? Five hundred dollars. And where you gonna go to? It was called Three Hundred Five um, Plastic Surgery in Miami. Do you go? A lot of Miami. celebrities go there. Cimarella went there. Demo Wilson went there. A couple of celebrities went there. So you were going to go to Dr. Miami, basically? No, uh, I was going to go to Dr. Cannon. Okay. What made you uh, wanted to get it, and then what made you cancel it? I think, like, honestly, like, I think I, I, think I wanted to get it just – at first, like, I was always happy with my body and stuff, like, growing up fine. But I think, honestly, I'm not going to lie, I think Instagram kind of make you um, kind of second guess and be like, hmm, I wonder what I would like this way. Or, like, if I just had some, you know, bigger hips or, like, more ass or whatever, like, you know, enhancer, like, that would be cool. But then I started seeing a lot of things about how dangerous it is. And I was just like, oh, it's not worth it and I didn't find out most of that stuff till after I already booked and then the process they weren't being very um the customer service wasn't that good so I didn't really feel comfortable with them cutting me open anyway so I was like I'm just gonna cancel it take my L because the deposits are non-refundable so I was like $500 on my life my life I'm good so I don't understand though. If you get a BBL, you still gotta work out though. Yeah, that's fine. It's, I don't. I like I like I told you. I have a history of running track, so it's no problem me working out. You know, I I can work my ass off and get a nice body, but will I be able to get big hips? No, that's just genetically not possible to get huge hips, no matter how much you work out. If it don't run in your family, it's not gonna happen. I wanted to be. I wish it was a surgery to make me six three. I want to be six four, but I'm. Hot. I think they got um knee stretching surgery. <laughs> I should have put salt in my shoes when I was growing up. Maybe I would have been taller. I ain't never heard of that. <laughs> it's a Michael Jordan book, though. So I don't know if y'all ever read it. Jordan said it. You should do it then. Shoot. <laughs> right, right. So you did that, and I'm about to say just now. Oh, so you've been doing that, and then. I heard the song uh, Tipsy. Whatever it's Tipsy. No, All of My Love. I heard the song All of My Love. All of My Love. It's a good song, though. Thank you. Very good song. Uh, I like the skit of it, though. That, did you direct that video? Or who helped you direct it? Yeah, uh -huh. I wrote it and um, I directed it with along with the videographer. Um, we put our heads together and came up with the concept and everything. I write music video treatments, too. So we that was so fun. It took us like four days to shoot it. Um, 
shot it in downtown Columbia, but we didn't make it look like Columbia. We wanted to make it look like just a nice little city, you know, area. Um, shout out the Good Life Ga Cafe downtown. They let me use um, their restaurant. If you pay attention to the beginning of the um, music video, we were like in front of a restaurant. So that was really fun. Right, right, right. Uh, back to the BBL. Did you do it because you wanted to feel pressure from social media? Did social media always did influence you in any way, shape, or form? I think it did influence me. And then another way, another thing is just like, I just always like, well, I ain't gonna say always because I, yeah, I think it was mostly like um, social media. And then sometimes I just won't, didn't like how I looked in certain things. And I was just like, oh, I wish my, if my head stuck out a little more, then this dress would look cuter on me type of thing. Was it a particular Instagram model or person that kind of? No, it's just the typical body, the typical BBL body, small waist, big hips, big ass. I just feel like that shit right like, there is just kind of plastic to me. Like, I was, it'll go back to being natural, like the Aaliyahs, the Holly Berries, the, yeah, I've come the to Eves, it. the Eves of the world. You know, it's just natural because they're face. It's all about the face. Yeah, I've come to realization that's the route I'm going to have to take because I'm not, I'm not getting sick. <laughs> and all the people I just named were beautiful women, and they didn't have a, I guess, I thought they had body, but maybe they didn't have what you call the social media body. That we have today that's presented so i don't know yeah i think social media is kind of sh warping what beauty is in the sense don't you think kind of yeah it's kind of making an unrealistic standard and it's kind of making it look like oh everybody um's getting them and it's just so easy but it's like you really need to do research and make sure you really want to take that risk like you really want to like you could die yeah, I've seen a lot of botch surgeries uh, happen, you know, bleeding out their ass, can't sit on your ass for weeks. Yeah, I didn't know that it's the number one um, leading cause of death out of all the cosmetic surgeries. Once I found that out, I was like, oh, no, I'm good. I thought boob breast um, augmentations were, like, more risky because you're actually putting the object in your body. But it's the BBLs. Right, right, yeah. BBS. Brazilian butt lift. What if you just fly to Brazil and get it done? Would you trust it? Dude? No. <laughs> no, because the people I was going to were really good people. Like he didn't that doctor didn't have any uh death rates. Hmm. You know? I'm just not about to take the risk. Right, you know. See, I mean you got too much to lose right now, you know what I'm saying? So you definitely want to take any chances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I, I, wish, I wish people be huh? It was supposed to happen at the end of this month. Mm. All right. Well, at least you had peace with your decision. That's all that matters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever been on a blind date before? Like, like scripting in the video? Um, No, never. I've never been on a blind date. I've always been that girl that's like always in a relationship. So I've been in like two relationships. And, you know, that's about it. I haven't really been out here in the dating world. Now I am, but... um. At that time, no. Mm. Would you ever be open to doing a blind date? Yeah, I guess for fun. I wouldn't. I wouldn't see nothing coming out of it. But right, right, right. Who's the Who's the guys in the video? Um, the main guy in the video, his name is DK Turner. He's a photographer and a actor. He's funny. And then the um, one of the light skin guys, the one with the uh. Jersey, his name is Michael Michael. He's also a director and an actor. And then the other one's um, name is Trey Jackson. He's an actor and he's a dancer. And the two females I had in there, one of them was my best friend. And then the other one, her name is Alana. She's an actress too. So, But their credits and their Instagrams um, are all at the end of the video. Okay. Yeah, I thought the uh, video was very different. Um, it was a very different different video uh have you worked with any rappers in south Carolina? um behind the scenes um we haven't put anything out though but behind the scenes i have um my first the one that i'm putting out tomorrow that's my first like feature that i'm ever putting out and he's in uh baltimore rapper so mm, okay what's that artist name 
His name's Split Baby K. Okay, okay. Uh, was you writing music since you was a child? Like, you know, writing music? Like, No, I would write little poems, you know, every now and then. But it's really crazy how it really almost came out in thin air. Like, when I was younger, I always wanted to be a singer. I was like, I don't want to sing, I want to sing. But it's like, you know, people have crazy dreams when they're young. People don't usually listen. You tell your parents you want to sing. They're like, oh, that's cute, you know, type of thing. And that's just kind of how it was for me. But as soon as my parents saw me running then they put me in track and I was really good at that so you know I, you know I think that's another reason why I stopped because there's other things that I wanted to branch out and do and with track and field like you got to eat sleep and breathe that shit you don't have room to do nothing else so um I had to make a choice to either keep running track or like figure out what I really want to do and then in the midst of me figure out what I wanted to do I knew it was something in the art so I got really heavy in the acting and then I, um, one day I was just like, went before I wrote Tipsy. Tipsy was the first song I ever wrote, like ever. And um, one day I was just like in my feelings and I was on YouTube and I was like, let me pull up a beat or something and just see what happens. And literally like the lyrics just came to my head, the hook lyrics just came to my head. I didn't even have to think about it. So after that, it was just like, okay, I'm a, I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to keep playing more beats and see, like, how much more things I can write. And it just ended up being fun. So I ended up sticking with it. Yeah, also in Tipsy, uh, you got, you know, in the video, hold up, I wrote it down. I believe also uh, you said, I'm going to do you how you do me in the Tipsy video. Uh, do you do that in real life, though? Okay, so um, my new project, everything on there is a true story but when i was in the beginning stages of my writing process like tipsy i would just write things that i felt like sound entertaining or controversial so part bits and pieces of that song is true and then some parts are thrown in there just to make things controversial um, and what songs are there and what parts are there pretty much the whole like majority of that song because and when i was in that space I was in a relationship and that relationship didn't have cheating in it like on either sides like it was faithful we didn't really have that many problems but um it was like towards the end of the relationship and um I had like a daydream one time about somebody and I was just like it was a daydream but it didn't happen so when I was listening to the beat I was like basically writing the day's dream and that's why at the end of the song um everything reverses because it didn't happen i was daydreaming in the music video so mm -hmm. yeah but um now a couple years later i do have like a problem with being like vengeful somebody you know tries to mess with me but i don't go that far but i do have a song on my project called the game and that's kind of like tipsy part two. It's kind of like, that's the truth. That's what I really do. Like in that song, that's how I really like retaliate, retaliate if someone like tries to play with me in a relationship. Do you believe in, you believe in getting even with what you're saying? Um, I don't, I don't think, I think it's toxic, but um, I definitely have, I'm really good at making people believe that I got even, but I really didn't. Like some a marketing your, type of thing, you know. What's some of your most toxic traits? That venge vengeance, like I can be vengeful, like if somebody, because I feel like I'm I'm a good person, and I'm just like if somebody tries to get over on me, it's like you didn't have to do that. So it's like now I'm like okay, since you decided to even play with me, now I got to do something and fuck you up, you know. So what would you like, do? It just depends on what it is. Like, if say like I'm with somebody and 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 I call them and they hanging up on me or whatever, I might hang up on them for like two days or three days after that just to make them feel it. Cause I'm like, you don't have to do that. Like, don't play with me, type of thing. You know, I, just a little petty shit. But like, I don't really never take it, you know, that far. If it's really bad, then I'll just separate myself from the person. You know. Right. But I, the song called The Game on my project is 
is like a clear cut example. Um, it's basically like a song about me. This is a real story about like me getting cheated on and me making the guy that I would believe that I did the same thing to him. But really, I didn't. But I was just fucking with his head, you know. Mm. So you like do psychological damage for what you're saying? Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm trying not to do it, but <laughs> um, okay. but that yeah, that's my toxic trait. My toxic trait only happens if I'm provoked. So if don't know why I provoke me. I'm good, like you know. Mm, right, 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 right. You, you think a toxic toxic relationships are addictive? Yeah. And why is that? Because it's like. I think it's like a little chemical reaction that gets like let off in your head every time like when you make up with somebody like you have like makeup sex like that stuff gets addicting like oh like we we arguing I know this shit about to be fire you know I know this makeup sex gonna be you know whatever you ever did that on purpose no I mean no I don't think I don't know maybe subconsciously but um not like with something serious, you know. I think we all do like little petty shit sometimes, you know. But right, right. Toxic relationships definitely can be addictive. You just got out one. Yeah. <laughs> so you had ended relationship, but you did. Hmm. You had ended. Yeah. It was too much. Yep. Right, 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 right. You too play for that shit, then. Yeah, that's, I mean, I don't really have, I don't have to deal with that, you know? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, the touch relationships are terrible, man. You think the music is influencing it? Um, if you are that, um, fragile of an individual, I think it will influence. If you don't know yourself, and you listening to this music, and, you know, you listen to these rappers talk about blah, 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 blah. And then you start, you're going to start moving the way that they move. And if you don't know who you are in yourself, you know. So, yeah, I think if you're a little immature, it, it can influence it in, in that way, yeah. How old are you? 24. Yeah. I feel like nowadays, like, a lot of the girls are going to be city girls. And niggas are going to be city boys. And they listen to their favorite rap, talking about fucking bitches and girls, talking about finessing guys out of money. Shit is a whole fucking mess right now. Yeah, I mean... People don't understand, like, if you listen to that type of stuff, it's like manifesting. If you listen to it too much, you know, because we all listen to it, you know, but if you listen to it. I love it. it. I just listen to it for entertainment. I know it ain't real. It's like a movie. Yeah, exactly. But see, my project, this shit is real. Like, everything on this project, a lot of women are going to be able to relate to it. And some men, but mostly women, women, they're going to be able to relate to it because literally everything everything in in the project every word is is real and it's a true story so then you got music like that too and then you know some of these rappers really do live that life that they rap about you know but what some of these dudes don't understand is you don't got the paper to be doing the stuff that this man is out here doing Listen, so. man, guys if you broke you don't need to be out here fucking man and having sex guys. If you can't afford all them kids like young boy future them motherfuckers got money and even you shouldn't have all those kids because spiritually and mentally you can't be there for all them kids. But, exactly. So I, I definitely don't think people really got to stop taking everything a rapper or a singer or their favorite artist say serious. It's entertainment. Exactly. It's entertainment. So why should a label take you serious? Why should a label sign you? Uh, I'm not really looking to be signed. Like you hear my son up there, he's up there listening. Um, watch the TV, but yeah, um, do. yeah, I don't. I'm not really looking to be signed. If I do, I have to make out like really well. Like it has to make complete sense to me. But um, if I you know was in a room with a label and they asked me that question, I would just say that I bring a couple of things to the table more than my artistry. Like I let me check this point. But um, you know I I can act. I write all my music, so, you know, they they getting looked out on that end, not having to pay, you know, writers, you know, to write my stuff, so they saving money. Um, I write treatments. I also um, can write for other people. So that's why I would say that. 
Chill out. Chill out. You want to say hey to my son? Yeah, say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. What's up, man? I have a book. Oh, man. I'm supposed to hear kids in the background. I don't hear kids in the background. Something's wrong with that. Yeah, somebody said the they got kids, I'm supposed to hear them. What do you want? Oh. You yeah. want? Right. What's your son's name? Okay. Shut up. I'll get you one. His name's Lamont. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. That's a real black man name right there. For real? That's a real I black wish man. I wish I put more thought into his name. Lamont and Jerome? Those are the blackest names ever right there. <laughs> Jerome. <laughs> Jerome, Jerome. Those no, are two his, blackest names ever. His middle name is Black. His middle name is Dontavious. Oh, boy. That's Black and Knees right there. That's Black as you can get. His dad tried to give him that name for the first name. I was like, sir, you remember when we was in school and them teachers used to have problems trying to say your name? Okay. And then you say you do theater, so you were growing up in uh, acting. You were doing theater in school or acting plays? No, I didn't start doing that till after school. I had signed myself up for um, acting classes because, like I said, I was really heavy in the track, so I didn't have time to do other stuff. So once I stopped running track, that's when I was able to, like, tap into, like, my other uh, skills and talents and stuff that I could do. So I had signed myself up for acting classes, learned how to do that, um, did a couple gigs. I wrote my first short film. Um, we filmed it. A couple of years ago, and it came out pretty good. I really enjoy um, acting. So, right, right, right. I mean, a lot of people used to do the music when they make it. And they go off the acting because the money's so good, like Ice T. Like, you know. like Ice T. Yeah, do yeah, Law and Order. Queen Latifah and Ice Cube and Cube and LL Cool J. Yeah, yeah. Tupac was really finna do it. Aaliyah was finna do it. It was finna go up. Well, I don't think Aaliyah was a good actor, though, in my humble opinion, but, yeah. Dang. I love her. But, uh, I love Tupac. Tupac was a very good actor, I thought. Uh, yeah. How you feel about the the the, the, uh, the track star, Shakar, who, you know, got suspended for smoking weed, though? You feel like that's fair or unjust? Or? I mean, I feel like, you know, it's just like those was the rules, and she understands that she, you know, made a mistake. But I also understand you know, that she was going through something. So, you know, that's why that happened. You ready to go to bed? But, yeah, I, I understand it. Um, I mean, it's complicated, but it's like that. those have always been the rules, like, forever. Like, even when I was running track, before I was running track, when Flojo was running track back in the 80s, like, those always been the rules. Um so I don't think that's it was a race thing. Like some people are trying to say it's a race thing. It's, Michael Phelps smoked weed. They didn't go bad. Him that yet. Oh yes, they did. And, that, and that's another thing I keep seeing. I'm like, that's crazy because I remember when he got caught up and people were disowning him. He lost millions in sponsorships. He got suspended for three months. Mm. She's only getting thirty days, so she's good. She getting thirty days, but it just so happens that her thirty days is literally like. <laughs> literally like two days after that the 100 meter dash what, what had already happened so she can't do it Damn, I didn't know he got suspended for three months though, Mike three says. months and he lost sponsorships and he didn't get to run in the world so yeah. he, he got it really bad like I remember and then on top of it he didn't even test positive for marijuana they did that because there was a picture of him smoking marijuana he was smoking a bong or something yeah he didn't, they tested him, and he tested it negative. So, honestly, I don't know how he didn't sue them for that, because he could have said the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shakara yeah. reminds me like a hood girl in the hood who just made it out. It was just fast as fuck. Yeah. But I understand everybody not really educated, you know, on the rules of sports and stuff. So, but the people that really know, we know, it's like, okay, she it's the rules. She knew the rules, and she took accountability like a woman as she should, and you know, she's got to do better, play smarter next time. But hopefully she can run the four by one. Yeah. I think they said something like, when her 30 days is over with, that's for her to start the relay or something. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. Because the 100 is on the 30th, and I think her that's when her, I think her time is up on like the, the 1st of August or something like that. Four by one might be on the 2nd or something like that. So You ever like ran for state or something? Yeah, I won state in the hundred. 
I won the hundred and the two hundred. Okay, the hundred and two hundred. Yeah, I went to state every year since nineteen. Mm. And when you won, like, what was your your time? You remember? I don't know. I even PR. That's the crazy thing. I PR like in the summer, in my summertime meets. Um, it was like twenty four probably, but my fastest time ever in the two hundred was a twenty three nine, and then in the hundred it was like an eleven, eleven something like eleven nine or eleven eight. So, yeah, I was right. pretty fast. I got recruited by USC, Gamecocks, and a couple of schools. Went on a couple of recruitment trips. Um, but the only reason why I didn't um, end up going to any of those schools is because of, like, what I said earlier, only um, only class I was good at was English. Everything else was bad. Mm. So. Yeah, you really have school went for you. At least you knew it wasn't for you, man. You ain't wasting no scholarship money or nothing. No, nah, I mean, I, I still ended up running track and got a, a full scholarship, but it was mm. just at a junior school. It was a junior college. Oh, wow. Okay. So I was supposed to go there, and then I was supposed to transfer, but my grades was just so bad. Like, <laughs> I, I can't even cap. It was just so bad. Right, right. And not that I was stupid. It was just like, I was just, I couldn't find the balance between. It ain't for everybody, and, though. Yeah, I couldn't find a balance. A balance. The reason to feel discouraged, you know, down is like, school ain't for everybody. I know it went for me. So I ain't even went. But you started your YouTube channel. Like, what made you stop doing that? Uh, you know, because YouTube got a whole lot of money, though. You see what I'm saying? And it's like yeah. you got the face for it, though, you know. I Women love love YouTube. I loved it. I loved it so much, but. When I started it, I wanted to do it on, like, the couple's tip. So it was a couple's channel. And then um, my boyfriend at the time, he was just really, like, I'm really outgoing. He's real introverted. So it almost became, like, a little struggle to try to get him, like, to keep doing, the, like, the videos and stuff with me. And then he finally came out and said he didn't want to do it anymore or whatever. So that's why we stopped because he, he didn't want to do it anymore and I was just like I didn't want to do it by myself because that's not how I wanted it in the beginning so but I'm I'm about to start back doing it because I actually have stuff going on that I feel like would be interesting and cool to put on camera um but yeah that's why I stopped right but don't you want you sure you wanted to do that though was you worried about people being in your business or you know I think that was most of his concern I think that's what he was mostly concerned about. Like he, he's more of like a private person, so that might be why, um, a part of the reason why. But I didn't care because I was just like, we having fun, we making money, you know, doing pranks and stuff like that. Challenges, kind of low key bonding, you know. So I, I liked that. We never shot like on the outside of our home, so people could see what's going on or anything like that. So I felt pretty safe. You know, mm. right, 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 right. Yeah, uh, you also had a prank that got a quarter million views. Uh, got caught by your boyfriend prank. Like, what made you do that? Um, I think it was like a trending prank at the time. Um, people was just putting. You talking about the one when I had put uh clothes in in a pair of yeah, yeah, that magazine. Yeah, it was just a trending prank at the time, and I was like, I felt like it was gonna uh, get his attention. And it did for a couple of seconds, but he figured it out. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, he was like, you think my son's going to let that go down right there in front of you? Yeah, because me and <laughs> so, we cheat on each other, so he already knew there was some, you know, he knew there was some bull crap. Them type of pranks never really worked. Right. Uh, how much money did you make off YouTube? Um, Probably all in all, two, two bands. All together short, for the short amount of time that we was doing it, yeah. Okay, okay. You feel like you could have made more if you were consistent with it? Definitely, definitely. Like that's all YouTube really is about is being consistent, having interesting, you know, good content. So, I mean, we I had us on a schedule where we were dropping videos three times a week. Some of the videos we used to do ain't even um I don't even have them up on the channel anymore, but. I had us dropping videos three times a week, like Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Um, just so I could have, you know, consistency. 
Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, because you, you see a lot of people keeping their bag off YouTube right now. And that's, I feel like that's what the next wave is going to be for the next five or ten years. YouTube is the wave. Like, that's where the money's coming in. Not Instagram or Twitter. No, it's YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, YouTube, you get paid, like, for real. If you're consistent, you get paid. Like, if you're making a million views, like, all, like, on each each one of your videos, and you putting a whole bunch of ads in there, too, but a good amount of ads where people won't get annoyed watching the video. And the more your views get up, then the, the higher the ads, they'll start letting you put inside your videos. You can make more money. Hey, man, I waited for them to send me that check, though, man. I'm just pushing out as many videos as I can to come to. You got, what is, like, the requirement, though? You got to have a certain amount of subscribers, or? They change the um, guidelines all the time. Algorithm? Yeah, they change it. Well, it's like a guide. It's like guidelines. Um, like, at the time, when I was on there, you had to have at least 10,000 views and at least 1,000 subscribers for your channel to get monetized. Mm. I don't know what it is now. But my channel's monetized, so whenever I post something, if I post my music video and it go crazy, then I'm a I'm gonna see my money off of it because my channel's already monetized. What, what date did they pay? Huh? huh? I'm sorry. What you say? I was about to say usually, um, if you go on YouTube now, somebody should be able to give you the answer on the what's the requirements right now for 2021. Right, right. I'm probably just more research on that and the. Uh... You know, check up on that. Check up on that. When did they pay you on the first or the fifteenth? Um, I can't remember. I think it might be. I know it's once a month. Mm. I think back then it might have been uh, either on the thirtieth or the first. Damn, once a month you have to make a whole lot of money. Then you pay you once a damn month. Shit. And it's a hundred dollar threshold too, so you have to have made at least a hundred dollars for them to send you anything. And they send it through your email or they send it to your account? Um, once your channel gets monetized, um, it asks you to create a, an AdSense account. So that's where you put your bank information in or you can have them mail it to you. I just put my bank information in so it just hit my account, you know? Um, right, 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 right. Yeah. But it said that you do it before. I think it let me put my information in before I even got to the views. If you go onto your your into your like your creator studio mm -hmm. and really like just dig around in there, you'll probably find it. Now, was that your Maserati in the, in the tipsy video? I wish that was my Maserati. <laughs> no, that wasn't my Maserati. Um, my father know a couple people, so um, they let me use it. Right, right, right. How you feel about Bill Cosby getting out of jail? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I really don't got nothing to say about that. I don't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> right, 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 right. How old you was when you did your first performance? Um, damn. I think I might have been 22. Yeah, 22. Yeah, because I've been doing it for like two, three years. I was 22. Right? Yep, yep, I was 22. Yeah, I think I was 22. Mm, mm okay. And where you was at? It wasn't even, it was like one of those like open mic type of things. It was a, it was at a place on, um, you know, um, what's a Jamaican spot on Two Notch? The Legacy Barn Group? Yeah, yeah. It, it was in front of, um, Mobase. It's a it's a place in front of Mobase, but I forget what the name is. But yeah, it was there. Um, it was probably like six people there. And it was cool. Was you nervous? A little bit, but it wasn't bad. I was just a little bit nervous, but it wasn't too bad. What song you perform? You remember? Tipsy. Okay. Okay. Yep, because that was the first song I ever wrote. So it was Tipsy. How long did it take you to come up with a song? It depend on what I'm writing about. Tipsy, I wrote that in like uh, I wrote the hook in like I wrote the hook to Tipsy probably in like 10 minutes but I finished the rest of the song in like maybe like 10 hours or something like that. I didn't try to write for 10 hours straight. It was just I took a break, went to sleep, woke up the next day. 
But for this project, um, what I did was I really like pushed myself. So um, we made every almost every beat from scratch. So when we would make the beat, I would um, go home and then I would finish the song. So the next day we could work on the next song. So with those songs, I was popping them out, probably finishing them in like an hour or less um, with the songs that's on this project. And it was a little easier to write these because I was picking from my life. Mm -hmm. But it's also a little hard just because some of the stuff was emotional to write about. Mm -hmm. um, so you shed some tears? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Needed You was like that, the song that's dropping tomorrow. Like, that's a true story about me being in a relationship with someone and just feeling like um, making them, them making me feel like I was less than or like I needed them like in the relationship. Like I was like below, below them or didn't like deserve them type of thing. So yeah, some of those songs was like that. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. We're definitely ready to hear that. So this month is July. Uh, have you ever dated the cancer? Yeah, this, um, I was with a cancer for seven years. Okay, what was that experience like? Do you have any war stories you'd like to share with anybody? I know war stories. I mean, that was a cool relationship. It was kind of just like, you know, like puppy love type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Playground love. Yeah, it's my son's father. We dated from when I was like 15 to 22. So. Mm. High school love. Yeah, you know, it's that little, you know, when you get older, you're like, oh, I don't think this is no more type of thing, you know. That's kind of what happened. Right, right. Usually people like that be together forever, though. So was it kind of hard for you leaving that situation? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It took a minute. It wasn't just like I was just like, okay, bye, you know, I'm done. It was like more like a, like a year process. It's like, okay, so... This is what needs to be fixed, changed, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And just when it didn't happen, it was just like, well, I'm not about to stick here, you know, forever. And then I was, it was one of those relationships, honestly, too, where, like, we had no experiences with, like, no other people. So I had lost my virginity to him, and he had lost his virginity to me. So, you know, it was just, like, really... Um, very like fairy tale ish, and once I got older, it was just like mm, I don't think so. I don't think I really um, I feel like you kind of outgrew each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Are you real friends with his mom? Like, when you break up somebody, are you friends with their mother? Or oh yeah, I mean, because we got we got a kid. We have a kid, and I probably you know went really talk uh, to them too much. But yeah. Um, that's that's my son's grandma, you know, I got a choice, you know. Right, right. Uh how, so you're official you're basically you're a MILF. So is it like what does the date seem like being a MILF? I mean being I, a mother. I'm finna find out, I guess. <laughs> I guess I'm finna find out. It's crazy because I mean, from my end, like I don't wanna date anyone that doesn't have kids. You gotta have a kid. I mean if you don't like, you got to be a hell, of a hell of a man. Like, I have to be able to know that you would be good with my kid, you know? Yeah. Then, you, then I'm pretty sure you're going to have another one with your future man. Yeah, like, when I'm right. established. No time soon. I don't want any more kids um, until I get married. Um, but no time right, soon. Right, right. Rightfully so. But, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm going to find out. I don't really know too much about the dating scene. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm that girl that's, like, always with somebody in a relationship. So... Right after I got out of that one, I got into another one. So now. No, no, no. I don't think you should have did it like that, me personally, though. Cause I think you just did that probably out of loneliness. And that can be a little bit scary because That's you could exactly have been with that happened. person's time. He could have been with somebody. See what I'm saying? So, yeah. But that's good, I mean, though. You don't like just yeah. going out there being free willy. And that's good. I, I understand that, though. What are you talking about? Freak willy or free you willy? Want, <laughs> you want to be free willy out there. You want to be loosey goosey, Miss Lucy. <laughs> You should say Freak Willie from now on. That's funny. Freak Willie, yeah. You want to be Lucy Goosey with Lucy Goosey with the box. So I understand that, dude. So, okay. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people feel like the dating scene burnt. They get burnt out a lot. I see a lot of women I follow 
they burnt down on the big scene because of social media and all that. Like, what are you, you fearful of it? Burnt out. What you mean by burnt out? They're just tired. Like, you know, they, they feel like, oh, there's no good guys out here. Good guys. Whatever that means. But, yeah. No, I. it's good men out here, definitely, for sure. It's just, you just gotta, like, when you come across a bad man, don't deal with him, and that's it. We spend too much time dealing with these men that's not good, and then we want to say we ain't no good men out here. If you just stop dealing with them niggas, then you might fall across a, a good man. I had to realize that for myself. I feel like, this is my opinion, I feel like single women keep women single, but that's a whole different conversation. Oh, right yeah, there. you be watching Kevin Samuels, huh? <laughs> I can't give you, you the ain't salt. Slick. I you can't ain't give you the salt, though. I, I can't give you the salt, bro. <laughs> I watch him. We just, now, I fuck with Kevin. Now, Kevin is like my uncle. He don't want to be my daddy, first of all. But Kevin is like my uncle in a sense. Now, a lot of women say gay. And he know he's misogynistic and hypergamy and he's a piece of shit. Or, what is your views on Kevin Samuels? I mean, I feel like he could be a little blunt sometimes, but shoot. No, he just straight, part, he don't take shit. And that's what I love about him. For the most part, him. I agree with him, you know, a lot of times. And I agree with, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I agree with 85 to 90% of what he said. Some of that shit, I'm like, come on, kid, you wild. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like 90, 90%, but I just feel like, you know, that statement, single women keep, um, uh, what you say, sing, other single women? Single women single, keep whatever. other women single. Yeah, I believe that. To a certain extent, I believe that for the most part because it's like you are who you keep around you, you know. So if you got a lot of single, bitter single women, that's what it is. If you got a lot of bitter single women around you, then you're probably going to become that because it's going to rub off on you. I believe in energy exchanges and all that's that. That's so. you, you are the company you keep. You show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Yeah, like all my, like, you know, I'll have guys that try to hit me up, be like, yo, put me on one of your friends. And I'm like, my friends are like me, so they're not even going to roll with that, you know. And yeah. I've had friends that wasn't like me, and they're not my friends anymore just because too much things it's, I just can't get jiggy with. It's like. I feel like with women, it's different from guys, though. Like, it's different from guys with women. Because women, y'all are influenced by what your friends say. Mm. Y'all are. Women are influenced by what their friends say. They, I feel like most, a lot of women, not saying all of them, they, they have to get validation from their friends. Like, they they seek it. They be like what their opinion is. So, you, you, you plan on getting married one day, right? You say you're going to get married one day? Yeah. That, <laughs> Damn, that means, I'm trying to get in my hair. That means if you ever want to get married and they don't, you have to leave your friends and be by yourself. If they aren't, th that's where it gets tricky for me. If they aren't a supporter, if they are bitter single, if they're not them, supportive of you, you don't need to be around. Them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If, if they're not support, like if I have a friend, she's like, hey, I don't want to get married. It's just not for me. But I want you to be happy. And if you, if I need to go to her and ask her an op opinion about a guy, you know that I like and you know is positive or whatever it's good feedback, then she could stay around. But if she's one of those friends that don't want to be married and she's always talking down on marriage, then you basically talking down on me because when I want to talk about marriage, I want to have a conversation, a good conversation, and I want you to be like, girl, I don't know why you worried about that shit. Marriage ain't, mm, 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 you know? And Kevin made a good point the other night. I was listening to him. I was listening to him. I got to go back and watch that story. I ain't finished it. He said, "You ha everybody has to get married unless you make at least a hundred thousand dollars a year for the next. So you're about eighty five or retirement age. How you gonna make it to live? That's a fact. Yeah, you, you take it? care of yourself. Well, you got a son, so you got a son to help take care of when you get old. Especially if you ain't got no kids. How you gonna? Who gonna take care of you when you get old? Social care exactly. gonna be. Yeah. Exactly. How, how do you feel about his? What's your What's your definition of high value, low value? That's why I gotta." I don't really like that term right there. How, what's your definition of a high value man? I I think I agree with his uh definition where you gotta uh he said money plays a part, but money isn't the only thing. Because I've definitely been with a man that had a lot of money, but he wasn't high value as far as his mindset and his um his way of living. You know, so money does play a part because it's just like you're a man, so your job a part of your job is to provide. And if you can't provide, then you can't really um, 
to present yourself as a high value man. It's just not realistic. So I agree with what he says. So you feel like money make you, uh, like, basically, if you make a certain amount of, in the certain tax bracket, you consider that person high value, man? Do I, do I what? Will you consider a person in a certain tax bracket a high value, man? No, not just the money. They got to have more than the money. Mm. I'm trying to open this thing. Yeah, they got to have more than the money. Because like I just said, I've dealt with men that had money, but they didn't have the values, you know? Thanks, 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 thanks. It's like, you see some of these rich fool celebrities, big fools. They ain't be crazy out their mind. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Dude. Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos got a divorce this year. I'm like, they're billionaires. They got more money than anybody in the world. Yeah. But it I mean, like, he still might be a, a high value man. They just probably just didn't work, you know? I don't really like that term high value and low value. I don't, I don't really like that right now. It's because it's kind of like shitting on people who work nine to five. And without those people who work nine to five, the world won't be what it is right now. Yeah, I get it what you're saying. But yeah, uh, no, right now, move on. I got, I got, I got two more fathers to go. Yeah. Should people be? Should people judge females by their baby fathers? Do people judge females by their baby No, fathers? do you believe people should judge women by their baby daddies? Um, no. And why? Um, um because that might have been somebody that they was dealing with in a certain time of life, and that might have just been what they was, you know, going through. Like, what if, you know, a woman, her baby daddy is like, I don't know. I just don't think you should do that. Um, I think we all still look at it, though. Like, we still look we like, oh, so that's what you was doing? Like, <laughs> that's what you was dealing with before me, you know? Mm. Even, I mean, even as a woman, we do that, like, with exes. Like, when mm -hmm. we do it a guy, look at his exes. You know, I think women do that more. Like, we'll look at an ex and be like, oh, if she ain't up to par with the look standards, we're going to be like, damn, that's what she was dealing with? Oh, I know this nigga happy to have me type of thing. So wait a minute. So you judge a man off his ages, what you're saying? I knew women do that. I knew. I knew. I knew. I think we do. Like, Do you certain... research the exes? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you research them or try to find them? If they baby mamas, they around, you know, so. But what if you ain't got baby mamas? You, yeah. you, do you try to research them and try to find who they were? I've never tried to do that, though. No, I haven't. But I've never dated someone who didn't have kids, so I always knew what the exes looked like. Mm. Yeah, show them to you. You just knew them. No, because you know I'm cool. You know, everything can be cool, calm, and collected. We can have cookouts. You know, when it's the kids' birthdays, they'll all be around each other. You know, mm. type of yeah. thing. Right, right, right. Should right. be like that, right? You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I would just bring it together. I mean, they're part of you. They're part of your life at least with eighteen for eighteen years. So, um, last one is: Do you believe Kevin Samuels is gay? No, um, I don't think he's gay. No, uh, uh, he's just the people just aren't used to seeing a man that's um that take care of his damn self and ain't dirty and is concerned with how he look. He's got style and he got swag like people just aren't used to seeing that in a black man really you know they're just not used you know what the reason why women call him gay because they don't have that's the deflect of saying that they don't have any other points so they have to assassinate his character or try to assassinate his manhood or his masculinity saying you're gay because they don't have any good argument for well he's gay or that's the, what the other word is who hurts you you see, they say that because they're because they hurt themselves, so they deflect it because he has good points, and because they don't have anything to bet those points up, they try to take a man who is saying he's gay, he's been hurt, or he had failed marriages. Who is he to speak? But he made a good point. Who else is helping other people trying to get together? You know, somebody I really love to watch. Who? Uh, his name is Tony Gaskins. Now, who that is? I never heard of him. Um, he's he's on YouTube. He's been doing it for years, and I really love him because he he's very raw. You know, he uh, he goes live and and talks about 
issues or he'll just uh women will email him their problems and he'll um make a video responding to it he's more like on the positive side on how to just get your life together he's a life coach mm. um so yeah he's also a christian so he's not as bold as kevin is he's like a uh by the book Christian, so he don't curse or anything like that. So, you know, if women don't like Kevin Samuels for that, then they can go listen to him. You know, if that's just right. like drawing them away. But they're both saying the same thing, um, to an extent. But uh, Tony mostly focuses on like just getting your life together as a woman, and he he helps the men out too. But he's more so catering to the women. But women don't realize Kevin is really catering to us too. He's Kevin is trying to Kevin is getting free. Kevin is giving free game. Kevin, I think the problem is women for many years have been a lot of a lot of people been writing books and selling books to women, and really they've been selling lies. They've been telling women they can get this magical man, and he doesn't exist. And if he is out there, he don't want your ass because he wants the magical woman. <laughs> so, so the shit is fairy tales, like yeah. So yeah, I think that's why they mad though. But I don't know. Did you see the video that went viral with him in the bed with the, with the bed? With the man was in the bed. Or, that wasn't yeah. even. I saw that. It was a FaceTime, and that was somebody else on the other end of the call. It wasn't in his bed. I, that's what I'm looking like. I'm like, even if somebody was in his bed, what if that's his homeboy that was sleeping that night? I'm like, y'all like they was in the bed together, or I'm like they they, they just try to find some. I'm like, bro, there's not even enough evidence. Call him gay. I was like, I don't believe him gay. I don't. I'm, I don't get it. But yeah, I, just being funny. They just not used to seeing a man that cares about how he uh how he looks. That's all. Yeah, you know? Kevin do Kevin do good for his age. He's fifty, like fifty two, I think. So yeah, he care about how he looks, how he dress, the cologne he wear, the rest the of the candles, the too. candles of the day, his taste in music, all that grown man. He on his grown man shit, and a lot of people don't. They don't um they don't understand that, so Right, right, right. Well hey man, listen, I appreciate you getting any shout outs or anything. Um, shout out to my parents, God, my family, my son for interrupting like ten times. <laughs> you good, you good. I understand, it's all good. I didn't you know, I'm a mama, I'm a super mom. You know, you probably can't even tell. I made waffles and syrup while I was on here. Holy shit, I didn't even know that. God damn. I made waffles and syrup and, and gave it to him. That's why I kept coming. That's why I was walking around. I didn't yeah. realize that shit. God damn, dude. But yeah, that's too. Being a mommy, all that stuff, and trying yeah. to do this stuff is kind of crazy. Oh my goodness. Wow. Your hands is full right now, dude. How do you find time for dating and you know, all that? You got this, this singing career, then you got the mom, being the mother, and all this. How do you find time for dating in your, in your busy lifestyle right now? Well, thank God I, got a, I did the right thing as far as making sure my son got a good pops. So we got a good co-parenting relationship. If I need him to get him and I got the show or something like that, he get him. He sees that almost every other day. So whenever I need to get something done, it gets done, um, you know, for the most part. And, um, yeah, that's where I got support with my family and everything, too. I record all my music in Baltimore. That's where my family's at. Um, my producer's up there. So whenever I need to, like, lay something down like my project my parents kept it for me um when i did that too so yeah hey, but let me remind you about this mm -hmm. before i get off of here it drops actually um it's called on a true stories on a true story and i actually haven't released the release date it says coming soon but i'll say it on here i'm dropping it on the 7th of september Seven or seven, that's too much from now. Yep, that's on my birthday. Um the whole project drops September the seventh. Needed you drops tomorrow. That's on the project. So you can look out for that. I got a couple of good big things coming up. Um that company that just reached out to me for a paid sponsorship. So yeah, just look out for that stuff. Thing on fireworks is crazy. Yeah, they loud as hell right now. I, I don't know if you heard that music back there playing, but hey, Anna, I appreciate you. It was a pleasure having you. When your project drops, you definitely got to come back on here. Yeah, I'm 
Yeah, I'll definitely come back on probably, a, um, I guess, like a couple weeks or a month from now. Oh, yeah, you got to do it in person, too, though, you know, get catch the vibe in person as well. Yeah. But uh, you enjoy your night and the rest of your 4th of July. All right, thank you. You, too. All right, little man. All right, say bye. <laughs> All right, bye. Right, thank you. One.